bloody cavies. Too big for their boots, as usual. They ought to keep out of our air if they don't want to pay for the pleasure. Whatever. Bloody cavies. Too big for their boots, as usual. They ought to keep out of our air if they don't want to pay for the pleasure. You know, elves, dwarfs, lizards, undesirables. Those of them that would see the whole realm eaten up by the void woke before they change their ways. what you did there, convincing Burrow not to lay the law down on that elf. Why do you want to help one of them? You watch yourself. Oddballs don't last long around here. Say what you will about the Divine Order. Say what you will about the Bishop and the Hammer. They're the only ones looking after us now that the Divine is dead. Heading into the kitchen? Don't try anything funny around Griff. I'm watching you. Ha! Cheeky! What's your name? I'm Butter. Nice to meet you. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did make so much. Long enough, I reckon. I'm surprised they haven't come for me yet. Most folks get taken away for the cure after just a week or two. By the divine, haven't I? Back home again, or to somewhere totally new. Sun, wine, freedom. But those are just dreams. No one can escape from here. She laughs. The sound fills the air like the ringing of a bell. Now, wouldn't that be something? Look, I have an idea. I know we don't know each other very well, but time is so short and... and a connection is so rare. <laughs> if we get out of here, will you meet me again in Arcs? I have responsibilities here. I, I can't start running around outside the family. It just 
It isn't done. But once we're out of here, none of that will matter. You'll meet me, won't you? She leans forward and grazes your cheek with her lips. Until then. Nice and slow. She smiles and gives you a long, meaningful look. this place. I can't get it out of my head. Thank you. A delivery? Surely you'll have one. Hmm? Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm very tired. Abominably tired. Beg your pardon. Griff is slowly, methodically peeling the skin from a potato. As you approach, he looks up, setting the potato, but not the sharp little knife down on the table. What? <clears throat> Who's asking? He smirks and holds the little knife up to the light, watching it. I'm listening. Sure, have a look. Good stuff, huh? I've got that special shipment you was asking after. Everything there. <clears throat> Thugs. <laughs> Look at it this way. People get lawless here, and we all starve. Can't help you there. <clears throat> if I could, I wouldn't be here peeling goddamn potatoes. He points the tip of his blade at the grisly sight of the elf hunched over, clutching his knees in the cage. I solve my own problems. I've got that special shipment he was asking after. Oh, my row. <clears throat> Bloody elves. I guess you mean the clown I caught stealing from my kitchen. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. Caught him red-handed trying to make off with a second crate after he took the first. <laughs> Went down like a rent boy when we grabbed him. 
Easy. Supplies. A crate of food, citrus in particular. <clears throat> he'll talk, or he'll die quiet. All I want is my supplies. <clears throat> Happy to let this clown die in a gutter instead of my kitchen. Bring back my crate, and you got yourself a deal. You already know the terms. Nothing else to say. Worse than war rations, these. That you wanted. Take your coin, then. I know that look well enough. You're about to pop, ain't ya? Why don't you enter a match and let some of that frustration out the right way? Can't help you leave, but I do know how you can escape. At least for a few holy minutes. Go on. Some more rations, these. Worse than war rations, these. An elf, caked in mud and blood, looks up at you from the bottom of the cage. He holds his shoulder at a strange angle. Despite his condition, he appears eager for your attention. You... You... Believe what he says? That I am a thief? He perks up and wipes his face with his good hand. Sahela, you speak to her? She is all right then. Good. Huh. She sees my trouble, of course. She already knows. And she knows I help you out of here in exchange. It is all prepared. It is ready. I am too weak to go. But I must care for Sahela. 
You release me, and I show you the way out. I am grateful. Your freedom for mine. A good deal. I see no one. In fact, I only hear the sound of Griff clearing his throat. You know how he does. <clears throat> like so. For some time, I think Griff takes his own supplies. But I see the anger in him that he does not find it. He truly does not find what he seeks. Griff is a powerful man. Power is mysterious, in case you haven't <clears throat> noticed. I intend no harm. I want only some provisions. A bit of bread, a potato or two. Nothing Griff should be loath to give. I need to escape, and, and I have people to consider. You understand. Thank you. And hurry. Please. Amid the squalor of Fort Joy, you suddenly spot an elf with diamond features, regal and radiant, but cold too, and sharper than any knife. She was the one who sat rolling dice in the ship that went under, deciding fates with every roll, or so she said. Her eyes are focused on a lizard some distance away, and you get the distinct feeling he's an unfortunate man indeed to be trapped in her tiger-like gaze. No sooner have these words left your mouth than she turns about and grabs you in a stranglehold. You feel the tip of a long needle being pushed a little ways into your neck. You caught me off guard. No one catches me off guard. Better tell me who you really are, or this time I'll let my needle do the licking. Not so very far from home, I'm sure. This is the turf of Magisters, and Magisters tend to be human, like you. A push, a pivot, and now you suddenly face her, the needle still all too deeply embedded in the side of your throat. Despite the precariousness of your situation, you notice something that remained undetected in the gloom of the ship, a flaw in her diamond features, a curiously shaped scar on her left cheek. Let me tell you, a little story. Once upon a bad old time, a lizard cut this thing, this living scar, into my cheek. The mark of a slave. But now I'm free, of sorts. And I've traced that lizard here, to Fort Joy. I intend to raise the subject with him. She drives the needle in deeper, and with- In truth. It does not matter in the least who you really are. 
You saw me mark my prey. You could warn him, save him, or kill him before I get my chance. That makes you a liability. That makes you needle feed. A bright sparkle of laughter follows your proposal. Ha! <laughs> How amusing. I admit I had not seen that twist coming. I was certain the pitiful begging was about to begin. Make your case and do it quickly. Why should I join you? Escape. <laughs> How you do tickle me. Most of the misguided deers around here would argue such a thing is impossible. Hmm. A silly thing to say, but then again, I did think catching me off guard was impossible. Oh, little needle mine, what should I do? Push or pull? Hmm, the agony of choice. You know what? Today is a rather fine day. Sunshine and an easy breeze. Yes, I'll let you live. I'll even agree to travel with you, provided we talk to that lizard I mentioned. I'm not quite sure the weather will save him. With a casual flick of the wrist, she withdraws the needle from your neck and smiles, as if she just invited you to sit down for tea. Let's discuss our respective roles then, shall we? You, me, and Death will be playing many a round of hide-and-seek. So, what role would you like me to play? As a rogue, my speciality is stealth. The quick silence of the dagger striking unseen. That said, I'm perfectly lethal wielding any weapon or magic. So, the choice is yours. But of course, I can play the strings of magic like a harpist her instrument. Is there any specific tune that takes your preference? suits me fine. Lead on. Or better yet, let me take the lead. Then follow me. But wait. You seem to have quite a few followers already. We'll be far too conspicuous traveling in a caravan like that. Return to me once you've culled a couple. Not drawing many winning cards of late, but I won't be crying over it. Sailed away from my last island prison, scot-free. No reason I can't do it again. Are you certain you want to dismiss your companion? If we have different paths to take, you and I, so be it. What took you so long? I'm ready to take up arms if you are. You're not quite certain you'll ever sleep soundly with Sabeel in any sort of proximity. But at least she's on your side, for the moment.
As you're about to approach the lizard, Sibyl cups your chin between thumb and index finger, then guides your eyes to hers. Listen, I need to have a chat with this here morsel of flesh. He has wronged me once, but may just do right by me this time. To your surprise, Sabeel proceeds to throttle the unsuspecting lizard with one hand as she drives the tip of her needle into his lower belly with the other. Then the questions commence. You hear him yelp about the master, lone wolves, and a man called Griff. Then, quite suddenly, there's blood everywhere as Stingtail falls to the ground, face first into his own intestines. Sabeel heaves a sigh of satisfaction, and as she wipes her needle clean, shoots you a cursory look. Chat's over. So, that seemed just a tad excessive. What you witnessed was an exercise in restraint, and jolly good fun to boot. something on your mind it's simple he scarred me so I scarred him extensively she defies you with devilishly innocent eyes can you blame me It is. I was wondering when your spying would make an appearance. Anyway, what's dead is done, so let's move on, shall we? Despite my high hopes, this scar disfigures me still. The search for the master continues, of course. Hungry work, the hunt. And you know what? I'm feeling a bit peckish. Stingtail mentioned a cook, as it happens. A fellow named Griff. Two birds, one stone. How about it? 